to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Oh, oh it's football time. <laughs> Weird. Uh, Weird. <laughs> This it can be football time anytime. Yeah. I, I'm not used to Wednesday football. Certainly not Wednesday afternoon football. So dot com. Dot com. Wednesday afternoon football dot com. I went there. I went to that website uh, yesterday. I really liked the content. I thought it was a nice website. I thought it was uh, beautiful. Yeah. So we do Very have aesthetically pleasing afternoon football today. And no Thursday night football as of now, right? We they could do anything they want. They could yeah. they could move me around to whenever they want to. They've they've been talking about adding a couple of teams to the NFL for Thursday night just for more money um, with everything <laughs> going on with COVID. So we'll we'll have to wait and see if uh, Rappaport or Schefter uh, talk any more about that. <laughs> that's that's what we're here for. Absolutely, uh, one week one week until episode one thousand. And I still have no idea what that show is going to be because Al Borland and Judge Giamatti have something they're plotting. I'm excited, man. Darn yeah. right. The whole team's in on this. We got Kyle helping and Brian okay. and, and oh Schneider. Oh, goodness. It's not going to oh, suck. Schneider. It's not going to suck, is it? Oh, of course it is. <laughs> you just, you just got to be there. Okay, well, we plan to be. I imagine we'll be a part. <laughs> are we even in the... Is, is that show 1,000 we're taking out and you guys are hosting? Is that what's happening? Yeah, somewhat. <laughs> All right. We, we this, need you there. This sounds great. Okay. All right. This is going to be fun. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Join the foot.com is the community. You get the extra weekly episode, all the premium perks, resources, tools, stats, all that good stuff at jointhefoot.com. Oh, do we have a quick question today, Brooksy? We sure do without that Thursday night game. Oh, We're, my uh, goodness. Quick question today. All right. Quick question of the day from Instagram. Uh, what are your thoughts on penalties mm. for not setting a roster? So this could be yeah. injuries. This could be bye weeks. He says, I have a league member that uh, may sneak into the playoffs that stopped playing after week two. <laughs> oh, uh, I thought you I'm don't wait at the draft, Jason. Well, <laughs> uh, look, I'm not going to lie to you. The rest of your league should be a little embarrassed. Uh, he says he wants to let people in that have been participating all year. So he's thinking about maybe right. uh, blocking this autopilot commissioner out. Oh, man. So, oh, man. I say let it ride. I say you got to beat this computer team if you want the championship. <laughs> I mean, you can't let this auto coasting you know this this is this is someone who put their tesla on autopilot and went to sleep and we're just hoping that on the freeway it doesn't crash you got to stop that <laughs> thing man that's your job <laughs> but it's the job of the other managers you're saying not the job of the commissioner right i'm saying you gotta you gotta beat that team um it, it does stink i will say this if the if the manager is completely like out they're not doing anything they're not responding to anything then then sure it doesn't matter um it, it's hard after the fact to create rules though right like yes if you didn't have a rule already beforehand and now you miss things to say okay well here's what we're gonna do backwards compatible uh new rule so this should definitely be an opportunity to create a new rule for the future what what rule but should that be can't you just tell that uh, manager that you did make a rule back in the beginning because they won't they won't have paid attention. So well, the the problem <laughs> is not for them. The problem is no. for the rest of the league of like who faced the uh, who faced this auto drafter and or the, the non compliant manager. I mean, did someone sneak a free win in that times time, time period? Sound like it. <laughs> well, but they're gonna sneak in, meaning that they are. This is like the sixth place team. That means that other teams played them when there was bye weeks and their best players. I mean, this team clearly has some good players, and and someone got to play them when those best players were on bye and get an easy win. So that's it's tough to ret retroactively do anything here. I uh, yeah, I don't I, I I don't mind pulling them out of the playoffs though. I mean, you you don't adjust past results, but if you want to put active players or you want to you know. 
lay out a statement that says, look, if we don't hear back from this guy before the playoffs start, we're not going to give you one of the spots. We've had this come up at times and, you know, on a week to week basis, somebody leaves somebody in uh, every once in a while. That's pretty much like you've lit the fuse on being kicked out of the league. I mean, that and if you don't put that fuse out in the next 24 hours, mm -hmm. you, we've got somebody waiting in the wings for you. Now, Judge Giamatti, you you had this happen a couple of years ago. Is that right? Yeah, and that's exactly what I did. I made a statement to the whole league just saying I haven't heard from this manager in weeks and weeks, and I've tried to reach out, and I want a competitive playoffs. And so yeah. I just decided that's what we're doing. So who did you put in? Just the seventh place team? Well, of course, that person responded right before the playoffs. Oh, <laughs> so, of course they did. Yeah, they, they were that's back. my wallet. That's my wallet. <laughs> yeah, and that, that's what will happen in, in virtual. Oh, I'm in the playoffs? I'm back. Okay. Well, that, yeah, I think that getting them out of the playoffs, if they truly are inactive, is important because the integrity of the playoffs will get messed up. Yes, they've autopiloted up to now, but whoever's playing them in the first round is going to have an advantage over an autopilot team. So I, I don't mind that policy. And, and every league should be, you know, we always say at the beginning of the year, better to play with an eight-team league where every manager is active than a 12-team league where you're dealing with this type of thing week to week. So certainly adjust for your future. Um, but uh, but I think Jason's right. You should be embarrassed this guy got into the playoffs. <laughs> Look, man, it, it happens. Yeah, I'll say it too. As a as a commission, I mean, it was very clear at the beginning of the year the expectations to be in the league are to set your lineup every week and that sort of thing. So sure, I didn't I didn't feel bad kick, trying to kick that person out. All right, let's do some buy sell. Buy or sell presented by Pristine Auction. All right, last week, uh, we'll throw this one out. We all uh, bought or sold DJ Chark as a top 29 wide receiver. He wasn't because he didn't play. Mm, that's rough. Uh, nailed it. And then uh, Aaron Rodgers as a top eight quarterback. Uh, Mike and I both bought it against Chicago. I don't blame Jason for selling it, but at this point in time. You don't doubt Rodgers. You don't doubt Aaron Rodgers. No, don't if you remember, Rogers. I did not doubt him. I was taking the field of eight other people with no bye weeks. That's called doubting Rodgers. Mm, yeah, all right. Yeah, That's I mean, you lost. That's you lost Four that touchdowns. He, yeah, I, I deserve the L. <laughs> and then Clyde edwards alaire 80 total yards. Jason and I sold it. He didn't get it done. I will say this about Rodgers. Somebody sent a message in, and they said uh, they were doubting Rodgers as well. They said, boy, should I play the Eagles D? Darius Slay is going to shut down Devontae Adams Whoops. this week. Am I crazy to potentially play the Philadelphia defense? Yeah, you crazy, man. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers will get it done against Philadelphia. How Darius Slay do on DK Metcalf? I know. That was his point. He said, uh, Darius Slay shuts down route runners, not physical size. I said, good luck. I think Devontae yeah. Adams is uh, in another tier. But week 13, buy or sell. Oh, boy. Uh, this is very special. Brooks put together players with the jersey number 13 as our theme oh, this week. Lucky Ooh, nice. Oh, lucky number 13. Uh, but this is a good one to bring up. Brandon Cooks against Indianapolis. Will he have 83 receiving yards? Set the line at 83. He has hit that mark three out of the last four games, but not by much. 83, 39, then 85, 85. And I'm two kind of the of opponents were very easy. You got Jacksonville and Detroit in there as far as two that he hit on. Indianapolis, very difficult opponent, I would imagine, no, but I'm gonna. I am going to hop in here and buy. I'm gonna buy that he hits it. Uh, we don't know exactly what's gonna happen without Will Fuller, but I trust at the end of the day Deshaun Watson to to manufacture enough yards to stay competitive in the divisional matchup, and it's gonna have to go through Cook. So I'm gonna buy. Yeah, this is all about what you believe about Brandon Cooks. Can he actually be the go-to receiver in this offense when Kiki QT's at number two, when Jordan Akins is running out of the slot, when you've got a mess in the backfield. I don't think so. I don't think he gets it done this week. I'm going to sell Brandon Cooks hitting that mark. I don't think he can demand. He, he will be productive, but I don't know if he can. De I don't think he goes up very much. Yeah, yeah I, I'm with you, Andy. If I, trying to read the situation Yeah, with uh, no one has wanted Brandon Cooks 
the, these teams, apparently, even though he's been a very productive wide receiver in his career, but can he be the man? And uh, I don't, I don't think he can either. Even though this Brandon the Cooks can do this, tough. The, the matchup is tough. But Brandon Cooks can do this in two receptions, be, just because of the yeah. the type of player that he is. So one big play, and, and we will be sweating the yes. eighty-five marker. And I'm going to sell. Okay. Yeah, you're absolutely right, though. It could take uh, <laughs> very little time for Jason to end up right on this one. Mm-hmm. Michael Thomas. At Atlanta, is he a top 24 wide receiver this week? Two weeks ago with Taysom Hill, number 16 overall. Hooray! Yeah. Last week with Taysom Hill, 43rd. In fact, Michael Thomas is not Michael Thomas anymore. No. Not right now. So, buy or sell as a top 24 against Atlanta this week. I'm going to buy it. Okay. It might, it might be... 22 on the week, but I think he <laughs> I think he gets there because I think Atlanta will be productive enough on offense to force the issue. This is not Denver and what we saw last week. They didn't need to do anything. I mean, Taysom Hill could have thrown the ball zero times and they would have won that game. So it's true. I'm gonna buy it. Yeah, I'm I'm also going to to buy it. We we saw him be the the first target in what was a more competitive game. You know, the Kendall Hinton ish led Broncos uh you know the 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 over under for that are you game saying was he played like ish or like, you're saying hint, the hint I, I'm saying he was kind of the quarterback <laughs> but not really half time you know was it Lindsay was it they, they were rotating guys and you know the the over under on that game was 36 points last week we should have seen a bad game coming for for pass catchers so I'm, I'm gonna buy he's still Michael Thomas um and despite what Derek Carr couldn't do against Atlanta it's, I it should be a good matchup yeah, the, the the marker for top 24 for Michael Thomas is a bit low, so I will buy. And I don't have uh, enough stats here to play a full game. I just wanted to highlight something that there are uh, – Michael Thomas has played five games, and there is a wide receiver, a rookie wide receiver, that I was talking about yesterday. He plays for the New York New York Jets. His name is Denzel Mims, who is averaging more yards per game then Michael Thomas in the same amount of games played. That's where we are. Yeah. Yeah. That is a more it's gross. of an indictment on, on Michael Thomas's yes. production. <laughs> Remember when um, you're at the beginning of your draft and you're deciding, when do I pivot from running backs and just go the safe option? This, yes. You, you oh. know what I mean? Like, uh, these running backs have questions. Now, I'm going to go safe. I'm going to take the known guarantee in Michael Thomas in that first round. I mean, it, it's Yikes. insane. What has happened to Michael Thomas? Because it was, well, okay, wide receivers don't get hurt as much as running backs. Michael Boom. Thomas has Drew Brees. Everything is good. So then Thomas gets hurt. It's and- all right if Drew Brees goes down because you got Jameis Winston <laughs> slinging the ball. Yeah. Oh, man, Things change football. quickly. All right, the third one, Keenan Allen against New England. Will he score a touchdown? And normally, you know, you don't bet on a touchdown. Your odds are against you, but five straight games for Keenan Allen. You know the 10 targets is going to be there. You know he's going to have some targets inside the red zone. The odds for Keenan Allen hitting six straight games? So what do you say? Buy or sell? I, look, I, I, he, <laughs> this he's going to – This is silly. Yeah, it is. He's going to be looked at in the end zone, and you know Herbert has got it done. But with Gilmore there, and the odds of hitting a six straight being small already, I'm going to sell. I don't think he gets it. Keenan Allen has scored in seven of eleven games. Like Keenan Allen, the knock on Keenan Allen has always been touchdowns, and Justin Herbert has saved us from that. the The target share did go down. A little bit uh, with the return of Austin Eckler, but <laughs> this, is a, this is a silly bet. Uh, I will, I will buy. Sure, I'm going to buy that Keenan Allen gets a touchdown. Well, because why not? He's elite. He's- I, I do think Herbert is just naive enough to ignore the Gilmore factor and thread the needle. I was going to buy if you sold. I assumed you were going to sell. I'll, I'll buy with you, Mike. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> why Keenan. not? Let's do it. I mean, right, the, that, that, the touchdown last <laughs> week uh, it should not have happened. That was that ball. It, it, it defied, transported. It defied yeah. all quantum physics laws in existence, yes. 
and just went straight from Herbert's hand into the belly of Keenan Allen. The frame rate couldn't even handle the speed no. of the ball. No, you're right about that. That was buy, sell from Pristine Auction. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit on their sports memorabilia. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Well, this has been a wild ride. We do have WednesdayAfternoonFootball.com today. And yesterday news started to break that J.K. Dobbins, Mark Ingram, they're both going to be activated from the COVID-19 list. They pushed the game back far enough to where they were eligible to come off. And so everybody, you know, we talked about it on the show. Everybody that has Gus Edwards and got him for Thanksgiving is going to be kind of uh, ruined by this news. And now the news is they're not expected to play. Do you guys have anything new on that? Or is Gus Edwards actually going to get the majority of carries? Uh, at, the, at the time of this recording, that is the latest news, is that uh, multiple sources confirming that they are not expected to play in this game. Gus Edwards will get the majority of the carries. Um, so, you, you, you know, you're going to get an opportunity for what you hoped for, which was Gus mostly by himself, but against a very good Pittsburgh defense. Well, sort of, because you, you thought you were going to have uh, Lamar Jackson as the that's, quarterback that's a for a point. Gus Edwards running back play. Have you heard, uh, speaking of Lamar, the fact that they moved that game back from Monday to Tuesday, there's talk of that's for the eligibility of Lamar Jackson. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, because I, I mean, I don't doubt it, but I don't, I don't know how the, the timeline works out. When was the announcement of, of Lamar? His first positive test because I, I don't I don't remember exactly, but it, ten it, days. It just seemed kind of odd that they would force the Ravens from Monday to Tuesday. Jason's just sitting there with a devious smile on his face. I just feel bad for Broncos fans. Uh, you know, it's like where where was our help? Where was our push? Right, they had to go play a game with Kendall Hinton. Uh yeah yeah that it's true. So you could get Lamar back without missing a second week. Is my point that that is a possibility. Sure. David Johnson, eligible to return for week 13 against the Colts from the concussion. No word on whether they will bring him back yet. The only thing I've heard is that the Texas coaching staff is, quote, hopeful he will be available. Uh, Brandon Ayuk coming it's off. Possible, of okay, it's possible that David Johnson's on your I, or, uh, uh, your waiver wire right now because maybe you play in a league that doesn't have an IR spot. I would be proactive in, in trying to put him on my bench. Yeah, David Johnson, David Montgomery, when they missed time, uh, they were missed. Like you, you saw what the backups couldn't do and, well, and now made you Will, appreciate those players more. Will Fuller. <clears throat> Will Fuller is gone. Like maybe more targets end up going to David Johnson. All right, so we'll we'll monitor that this week. Brandon Ayuk eligible to come off the COVID IR list this week. So he should be back. I don't know if he's gonna be in my lineup personally. No. Uh all right, a degree of optimism for Miami that Tua will play in Week 13 against the Bengals. Mm. However, I know I was going to say I I knew that would be the fantasy reaction because he just represents Tua or Tua. He represents something completely different for Devontae Parker and company, right? Yeah, I mean, if I've got Gasicki, if I've got Parker, if I want to start a quarterback, if I want to have a lot of points and a fun game or enjoy <laughs> football. A good time. Uh, have a good time. Any of those things, you want Ryan Fitzpatrick out there. So um, I have a degree of optimism internally that uh, he will not start. So take that, <laughs> oh, Dolphins. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Now, do you uh, insta-sit Parker if it's N Tua? No. No, not against the Bengals. I don't, I don't insta-sit him. He, he still was getting enough work, had a touchdown in a Tua game. Um, but you certainly downgrade him. But you're not going to see 14 targets like you saw against the Jets. No, and then Mike Glennon's going to start again for Jacksonville in Week 13. Yeah, so that, and the, that the season's reports, going great. The reports that I saw, at least the latest, was that they've told the staff that that Gardner is healthy. So uh, this is either they're playing for the draft because I mean I guess Mike Glennon was okay this past week but Gardner is your best chance to win games but maybe you don't want to win games right now yeah 
Yeah, and they're succeeding on that goal. Uh, <laughs> but James Robinson is an every week start, regardless of which yes. subpar quarterback is is behind you could, center. You could just say, to, regardless of which, whatever your variable is, is it rainy? Is it sunny? Is it a yes. tough defense? An easy defense? So who's at quarterback? Is, is he blindfolded? Blind? It doesn't matter. You 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 play James Robinson every week. Yeah, he has been certainly the best value MVP in fantasy. Yeah. Uh, a yeah, better than, so, I mean, going into the fantasy playoffs, you want James Robinson over Alvin Kamara, don't you? Oh, right now. Yeah. Brother. Yeah. I mean, Ugh. I mean, it changes when breeze is back. I would, I would flip them. But, uh, if breeze is gone and, and as of right now, you're not expecting breeze until at least week two of the playoffs. And that's on the earliest timeline. Yeah. I mean, will you make it to week two? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So uh, that'll do it for news. A lot of your league's waiver wires going through a day or two later. Reminder, check on uh, who your opponents have dropped. Drop it like it's hot. Yes. Drop it like it's hot. Yeah, and uh, like the leagues, like uh, platforms like Sleeper, if the commissioner did not change things, then manually change things, then waivers are running today. So make sure you go check that out. All right, before we jump into the mailbag, head first, by the way. We're going head first into the mailbag. Before we mm -hmm. do that, I want to thank today's sponsor. Listen, football fans, are you an Amazon Prime member? That's the easiest question I've ever asked. Mm -hmm. uh, you can watch NFL Football Live on Prime Video. It's the future of football. I was just talking to a Foot Clan supporter about this. Watching games on the phone has been incredible for our family i have a job i have to consume all of these games yet it lets me kind of be a part of things and keep the phone with me and kind of check in and look this week instead of thursday night you can watch the cowboys at the baltimore ravens on tuesday december 8th catch all the action on any device almost anywhere in the world you can choose your favorite announcer we've talked about this you could go troy aikman and joe buck you could go bucky brooks and daniel jeremiah from move the sticks you can get next-gen stats on the phone. Watch in-game replays on demand. Look, this is the way football was meant to be consumed. And again, that's the Cowboys at the Ravens this Tuesday. Kickoff is 8.05 p.m. Eastern on Prime Video. Also available on Fox and NFL Network. NFL Network simulcast subject to change. And it's all presented by Bud Light Platinum. Let's hop into the mailbag. Mailbag. Mailbag! Oh! Oh, Wednesday yeah. or Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I, and the Wednesday afternoon happened because we have a, uh, what, like a Christmas tree lighting? That's what I've heard. Do <laughs> people really the, tune in for that? Uh, apparently. It, you, it's a must-see, must-see That feels television. very uh, Christmas caroling. Like, like, that was cool once upon a time, but now you can Is listen it the to music tree? on the radio. and <laughs> Is it the Rockefeller tree? Yeah. Like, it, did they fix that thing? Did you see that thing rolling in? Oh, there? yeah. I was, it was Charlie was most, Brown. It was the most 2020 tree I've ever seen in my life. Oh, for it real? It lost its whole bottom You leaves. haven't like, seen the it, leaves Jason? Are no, gone. I haven't. Oh, man. It, imagine a tree that's half there. Oh, I can't wait to Google this. <laughs> but when it's they, gigantic. When they cut it down, it looked great. When they rolled it into New York City. It's a rough drive. It yeah. had had a hard time. Much it like had been the, through life. You don't like want to drive behind. this year. Yeah, you don't want to drive behind that uh, semi. No. Just all the <laughs> <laughs> you would have needed to put a dress on the bottom half of this tree to make it presentable for, for New York City. Uh, but, yeah, they're going to light it, though. Like, what pr is is that a long... On like, fire? I feel like you... <laughs> <laughs> Jason oh, just saw the tree. <laughs> Al just posted a picture. That is horrible. It's dilapidated. And... Can't you? Couldn't you have accomplished football and this tree lighting? Isn't that just more of a one click? It's on. <laughs> I mean, and now yeah. we're gonna go to the tree lighting, and the tree's lit, and we're back to football. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah it could have been like the halftime ceremony. <laughs> Is this a who wants to be a millionaire like suspense thing where they just sit there thump, any thump. minute now? Thump thump <laughs> thump thump. <laughs> All right, uh, let's start this mailbag off uh, with a voicemail question. Hey, guys, big fan of the show, Mars, calling from Brooklyn, New York here. I just wanted to ask you who has better rest of season value, Miles Sanders or Raheem Mostert, full PPR league? Let me know. Love the show. Thank you, guys. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's a Oof. great question. Miles Sanders, Raheem Mostert, rest of season. 
we man. discussed Miles yesterday. Um, I understand those of you that want to just leave him in your lineup. I don't think that's necessary, and so I, I lean Mostert. I will say, looking at Mostert's schedule here, he's got Buffalo this week. You can run on Buffalo. Washington, week 14. So the first week of the, the fantasy playoffs, Washington, that is not an optimal matchup for running backs. Now, I, I understand Kyle Shanahan's system works, generally speaking, against everybody. So it's not like you're afraid to play Mostert, but we're trying to compare two guys head-to-head -head here. But then Dallas and then Arizona – Mostert is set up for he is set up for success through the the fan through through the rest of the season really. Jason, would you rather Miles Sanders or Raheem Mostert in this schedule? Uh, the full PPR certainly helps Sanders uh, to have you know a, a baseline of the checkdowns, but at the same time, I, I think Mostert you you've got a chance at really catching fire the way he started the year as you know a, just a top option in fantasy and pretty much every time we've ever seen him inherit the role he has been very valuable so i'm i'm going to go with mostert the the worry to me is the the only worry that has always been there with raheem mostert it's it's health will he be able to you know that that's a great schedule i hope to still have him in those games cuz he just has not been a player that's been able to stay on the field Couple other Mostert questions. Then, would you rather have Mostert or Kareem Hunt rest of season? Hunt's been great. Mm. Uh, both of them share the backfield, but Mostert's the the lead back. I I kind of lean the Mostert side there, despite the the health concerns. Yeah, I would take the risk of Mostert. Yeah, it, it's it's super duper close because both of these guys can rip off you know a, a forty yard run uh, for a touchdown. But um, yeah, I mean. Hunt hasn't been as good lately. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Mostert. What about Raheem Mostert or the? I don't even know if resurgent is the right word, but the solid David Montgomery rest of season full PPR. Saw Montgomery <laughs> get a lot of targets. That's something Mostert won't get. But what do you think? Oh man, that's it's it's just interesting that we are calling David Montgomery solid because. I mean, he has been. We have the, aside from the injury game in week nine, uh, he was just a super steady running back to 15, 14, 24, 21, and seven last week. Yeah, and Detroit, Houston, Minnesota, Jacksonville. Like, David Montgomery is lined up here to be a very solid running back to with no ceiling ever. Oh, my goodness. Um. Man, full PPR. Go, oh, Jason. I can't decide who. Do you have a? <laughs> do you lean one way or the other? I think yeah, the full I mean, PPR sways me to Montgomery because he when once uh, uh, Tariq Cohen went down, like he's he's seeing, you know, essentially at least five targets a game. It's one of those things where I I, I think you you've got to look at your lineup and say. Are you looking for a ceiling play here? Because the ceiling play would be most hurt, but, you know, a, a multi-touchdown, a uh, couple of big, you know. That's David, fair. Da David Montgomery's not breaking off an 80-yard touchdown run. Um, but if you need No, he a, got caught. <laughs> he, he could have last week, but he right, got caught. Right, exactly. So, I, you know, it's it's one of those where if I think, I think Montgomery is the safer option, especially in PPR. He's more solid. If you need higher upside – uh, then, then you go Mostert, but uh, they're they're extremely close. I think it's important that if you choose Montgomery here, then by implication you're choosing him over Kareem Hunt and Miles Sanders. Are you prepared uh, to do that? Uh, no. Would you take David Montgomery uh, or Miles Sanders? I find of your fantasy algebra to be perplexing right now because <laughs> <laughs> we just chose Mostert twice. And and you look at Miles Sanders and you look at David Montgomery and one guy gets you excited with the preseason hype and one guy gets you sad with with all the unknown. And yet, you know, Montgomery has been solid. He's been contributing every week to your team where Miles Sanders has flamed out. I will say I don't I don't think I ever chose on the Raheem Mostert Miles and I I would take Miles. I would take okay. Mostert over Hunt. I would take Miles over Raheem. And I think Jason's right, man. It's what is your what does your team need? Do you need do you need a little bit of extra nitro for your playoff run? 
going to go with Mostert, or is your team pretty stacked and you just need one little patch on the boat? And I would go with David Montgomery. Yeah, Mostert will potentially. I mean, Tevin Coleman's going to come back. Is that? I mean, that's something yeah, that that's will true. be a factor. Where Mostert tends to make a big mark, but he does it on like I don't know ten carries, ten carries, uh, which is actually kind of how Kareem Hunt makes his mark. So that was a very interesting swirl of options there. And the truth is, is what Jason said. Your team, it's contextual, right? What do you need? Do you already have Dalvin Cook? If I already had Dalvin Cook on my team, I probably am going Montgomery in all those situations to guarantee production so that I don't submarine my team. Uh, let's go to another voicemail. Hey, Ballers. Jimmy from PA calling. I have a question for you guys. I'm fighting for a playoff spot, and I need a high ceiling flex play. Frank Gore or Cam Akers? <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because the concept of Frank Gore being brought up in a high ceiling question is uh, those two do not meet one another. No, 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 they don't. And I, I think that's that's where your answer lies. If you need a high ceiling, if you're like, I've got to get 20 points out of out of a guy, it's not going to come from Frank Gore. It could come from Cam Akers if they make the switch. Obviously, if they don't make the switch, then it will. It will. Then Frank Gore is a much, much, much safer off uh, option than Cam Akers. But if you're trying to call your shot and just saying who has the higher ceiling, uh, I do think <clears throat> it's Cam Akers. <sighs> but man, I don't know that you can just ask this question though, based off of ceiling. I mean, you have you have to factor in the floor because the the floor for Cam Akers is. Zero is yeah. The floor is literally zero. But I mean, at this point, I would say it's four to five opportunities. While Frank Gore against the Las Vegas Raiders is going to carry the ball at least fifteen times. You might see a couple targets. I'm starting him in in some leagues. It, it's <laughs> tough because it feels like <laughs> let's say let's say Dobbins, Ingram, and Edwards were all available. And then you're asking this question like, who's got right. the higher ceiling, Gus Edwards or or Frank Gore? Well, that's a tougher position to be in when you're choosing one out of three because Akers can break a long run, and we just saw him do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, the reality is if I had to pick one of these two guys to start on my roster and I'm putting one in, it's, it's going to be Frank Gore because right. it, ceiling isn't the only thing that matters. Uh, that being said... I, I still do. Th I mean, Frank Gore just doesn't have one. So, what? and just just to point out for Cam Akers, I I get it. If you watched the the ESPN highlights, you're like, oh, look at Cam Akers, and running back 14 on the week. Look at the look at the other numbers though. 27 percent of the snaps and nine opportunities for Cam Akers. Like th that. This isn't a looking back a couple weeks ago at J.K. Dobbins where you go, I think they made the switch to J.K. Dobbins, you're just hopeful that they've made the switch to Akers. There's no real outside evidence to support that they're really going to make a switch who, to Akers. Who has the higher odds of 20 fantasy points? I still think it's Frank Gore. I still say the higher chance of that would be Frank Gore falling into the end zone twice. twice. Yeah, exactly. Who, who's Frank Gore playing this week? The Raiders. The Raiders. 29th against the run, I believe. <sighs> yeah, I think Feel you free to make him your start of the week, yeah. Jay. <laughs> I'll Edo Smith it. just ran all over them. No, I I, I get it. <laughs> did you just say Edo Smith just ran all over them? I did. Because that is not something you want on your <laughs> defensive resume. He ran Wait. over the second string. Ah, okay. Yeah. Some of them. All right. Uh, YouTube question. Taysom Hill or Ryan Tannehill this week? Jason, I know you like Ryan Tannehill a lot. I do. Um, do you like him more than Taysom Hill? Uh, I do like him more than Taysom Hill. Um, I, I think wow. Ryan Tannehill against okay. Cleveland is a great option. If, if you remember, uh, look, I mean, Ryan, Ryan Tannehill was pretty much a top five quarterback or top six quarterback uh, in, in so many games going back to week seven when he got the job last year. This last month has been rough, but he's been – it's been tough, tough competition in his down games. Uh, when he's had, you know, a not brutal matchup, he's pretty much been good. I think the weapons with Corey Davis and, uh, you know, and you can always take a screen 
from Derrick Henry. That that happened this last week, and of course AJ Brown's a tank. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna start Ryan Tannehill. Man, I think I'm starting Taysom Hill. Uh, I I agree with you, Ryan Tannehill. I like him this week. He should be a good play. But if, if I'm looking at my roster and looking at Taysom versus uh Ryan Tannehill's versus the Cleveland Browns, Taysom is versus the Atlanta Falcons. I mean, it's it is Derek Yeti season where all touchdowns could just go to Derrick Henry. And I don't see a world where Taysom Hill is not involved in the majority of the touchdowns that they score against the Falcons. And the Saints are going to score touchdowns against the Falcons. So I lean Taysom Hill here slightly. I lean Tannehill with Jason on that one. Is Cooper Cup still an automatic weekly start? That's a Twitter question. Um, I guess I guess this uh, fantasy player has seen both ends of the spectrum between yeah. two weeks ago, 900,000 targets, and then this past week, which was disappointing. Do you view Look, him as an auto start? If these trends continue, 21 targets, seven. 13 targets, five. Oh, brother. You know what that means. No, I mean, the, the reality is last week against San Francisco, especially once they had – um, Richard Sherman back was a you know a, a more difficult divisional matchup. Um, they doubled Cup for the majority of that game, right? And so I I think Arizona Arizona's given up some you know big plays. Patrick Peterson's not what he was, and I'm not sure he's going to even be focused on Cup or not. I don't I don't expect him to shadow one guy the entire game. And Kirk Patrick and the other options at cornerback have not been good. So I mean to answer the question, is he an absolute weekly start? probably looking at the rest of his season yes. schedule maybe against new england you might have a better option the week after this one but outside of that it's 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 pretty good schedule rest of the way for a cooper cup i mean who are you gonna play above cooper cup that's that kind of where i'm at he's i mean maybe your roster is stacked i don't know but i mean like if you're looking at new additions to your your roster you got cooper cup here and then you're deciding should i play uh, Christian Kirk should well, like I play? It, it is it is disappointing. I mean, he's having a disappointing year relative to where he was last year. He was the number four overall fantasy wide receiver last year. He's at twenty two this year, so he is on the he's on the edge of auto start territory. If you're at the twenty two right. range, and, and, two, and man, two touchdowns. That's brutal. the that's where he made his money last yeah. year. So, yeah. did you have something to add, Jay? Well, I was just going to say there are there are other options coming up. You know, you you've got Deontay Johnson, you know, on your roster, and you've got Brandon Cooks on your roster, and you're starting to go, do I really start Cooper Cup ahead of those guys, or do I start those guys ahead of uh, Cooper Cup? That's that's what I'm saying. What about Curtis Samuel? Who uh, this question is being brought up by Al Borland, I think, mm. on a you know asking for a friend here. But this Kurt, week. Curtis Samuel, if DJ Moore is out in the fantasy playoffs, are you if, playing Curtis Samuel for the upside over Cooper Cup? If DJ Moore is misses time, then yeah, I would play Curtis Samuel. I wouldn't play Curtis Samuel this week. I don't think he's going to get well, any points against nobody. Week. Yeah, yeah, he's on by. So I'm going to. This I'm is rest of season. Cup. Yeah, no, I, is... it's it's Cooper Cup. Okay. Yeah, Debo. Give me it's Debo. Give me Debo. I go. De I think I go Debo. And look at, you know, Cooper Cup's on my guy. I just when I look at the whole season, what what frightens me about the auto start territory is that in five of the last seven games, he's been outside the top thirty eight, and that is weak submarining type of numbers. So uh, it's tough. It's tough because he could always have a big game, but I don't think Debo's going to have any bad games when he's I active. I I think we I think he will have some bad games. We we Jason haven't seen hates him. Debo. I, I don't, don't hate him. Why, Debo why do you hate Debo? I, I do not hate Debo Samuel at all. But no, the but why do you despise him? The reason I despise him. Thank you for clarifying on the verbiage here. The vernacular matters, Andy. Um, <laughs> the reason that I despise him is because you know we we haven't seen him with Ayuk and with other options if Kittle comes back I, I just don't think he's a guarantee Kittle's not this, coming back with this passing offense I'll bet Kittle does come back this year what like um, week 16 uh, I, week and I, 15, I would debate 16? that we haven't seen that because we saw him with Emmanuel Sanders and George Kittle from week 8 through 17 last year when yeah he was get him over a thousand yard pace and he was rushing the football and he was uh, and they what, had their starting quarterback then not, re I mean, 
sort of. I mean, let's not overstress the difference between Jimmy Garoppolo and Nick Mullins here. Debo Samuel, they build the offense around him. I I would bet Debo against Cup rest of season water bet if you're let's willing to do it. Let's go. Let's, let's do it. And that does not get an injury out because Debo is always injured. Fair enough. Water bet. This is a great opportunity because uh, we don't explain it all the time. People hear the water bet drop. It's been a long time since we've actually explained it. And I've seen some people on Twitter say, I love that you do these bets. What the heck do they mean? Uh, long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away, when we worked together at a gaming company, we used to play a lot of foosball and ping pong. And we had what was called a wheel of water. And if you got shut out in either of those games, you had to spin the wheel of water. And it was a a, a mechanism of punishment. Yes, where it, humiliation. You, humiliation more so. Yeah, you would get a cup of water poured on you in any humiliating fashion uh, possible. Sometimes it went in your pocket. Sometimes you were one inch away. Sometimes it was poured slowly with ice over your head. It was always the worst. I remember Mike, uh, (laughs) our uh, our CTO here at the company. uh, I remember Mike had shut out Rob one time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, at this time the the (laughs) wheel of water may or may not have had kind of a waterboarding aspect. And Mike (laughs) poured this water slowly on his head to the point where I thought he might drown. I I mean, it was you had no. No care for that man's no, life. No. I mean, to be fair, I then received it, and then we banned that. We did ban that waterboard. <laughs> but, but we make water bets here throughout the season. We have a Wheel of Water app that is free, and I believe still on the app store. You can go to wheelofwater.com to help can find you? it. You can, oh, you and we should update the photographs on wheelofwater.com <laughs> because we don't uh, look like that anymore. So we make water bets throughout the year. So it, it, we've we've always enjoyed. If you make them with your friends, please post and tag us on Twitter because when you pay the water bet out, because they are always entertaining. This you would think that a cup of water is not a big deal. Yeah, but it's, it's still, very it's hu- big deal. That's that's childish. It's very humiliating, and uh, a lot of the times these bets are paid out in the snow, like it, it's cold, and uh, water poured on you in the snow, not not great. So that that is the context of the water bet. Wheelofwater.com if you want to see pictures of us from from apparently five years ago. <laughs> um, oh, this is an important question. This is a, a existential situation here. Uh, Rigo from Twitter, what do I do now that my season is over? My life feels empty. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. good question. Well, first, you're going to want to uh, download and listen to the Spitballers podcast uh, through the off season because Great. that can help fill a little bit of joy on your Mondays. Just yeah, to- it'll cheer you up fun comedy podcast um but you you want to play through the rest of the year you do and the reason why is because it makes you better next year uh you will be better at drafting knowing it, it's funny because you, you go to the playoffs and you feel like football's over there's a, oh there's a month and a half left of real football that happens and players come out of nowhere and and you want to know who those those you know important relevant fantasy options are for the next season so you definitely want to want to keep playing, keep listening, listen to Spitballers podcast, and and you'll be happy. You'll be you'll be happy. Uh, all right. Oh, and jump into some DFS if you can. Yeah. Yep. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, Instagram question: What are the chances that CMC gets shut down after the buy? Oh my. I oh would me, put oh them. My. I would put them. Very, Jason's very face low. hadn't thought about that. No, I have. Oh, tr- oh okay. trust me. I've I've thought all about. I'm. I've been game planning my season through uh, Christian McCaffrey lens, and I would say this. I think it is a greater than zero chance. Um, but I would be. I would be shocked. I, w- I would still be really. Sh- well, of course, I'd be devastated. I'll be shocked if they do. Christian McCaffrey wants to get back out there. They're being conservative with him, but they're also building towards the future. They want to win these games. They don't want to lose for draft picks, and I think they want to get Christian McCaffrey back on the field. I, I, I don't think he's shut down. In fact, I've said this before. According to the timeline, the injury, he should be completely good to go in Week 14. I agree with you. I don't think that the odds are very high, and I don't think. Even if the team wanted to, I don't think Christian McCaffrey with his influence there and the way that he plays football, I don't think he wants to be, he would, that would be a really tough pill to swallow for him. He knows what's up. He knows what's up. He wants to go out there and dominate for fantasy playoffs. 
I mean that. Like, he, I believe he wants to go out there and win people championships to rectify, like Austin uh, Eckler does, the disaster of the season. It, absolutely, these players know what's up. Well, there's that, and there's also just the the leadership aspect of you are the highest. You're paid healthy. Player. Get out there. You're yeah. the highest paid player on the team. People look to you as the leader. You got to get out there. No, Mike. It's all just about the fantasy. Well, there. Look, it, that's part of it. He doesn't I care lead about leadership. A good, a good leader scores fantasy <laughs> points for his his managers. That's right. All right, we do have a question. A lot of concern about Kyler out there. Apparently, um, a Twitter question. Given Kyler Murray's injury concerns, I guess the shoulder and uh, the difficult Rams matchup this week, would you consider quarterback streamers like Kirk Cousins, which was Mike's yesterday, or Ryan Fitzpatrick, which Jason brought up, instead of Kyler? Am I overreacting to one bad game? That's the question. I am in some ways shocked that the most consistent fantasy quarterback in the league after one bad game is now being doubted. But is that fair with the Rams and how they're playing in the, the shoulder? It's, I think it's at least a fair question to broach. You don't, uh, don't just be stuck here when, when you're in a must win situation. I would still play Kyler. Uh, but I agree that there's some concern. I mean, the past two weeks, we've, we've only seen five rushing attempts in those two games from Kyler Murray, the one where he got hurt, and then the the next week where he's still dealing with the injury, and when before that, we had seen an entire month of Kyler running the ball at least 10 times per matchup. So, And, and that's that's the sauce. That's the engine that makes the Arizona Cardinals offense go is... Kyler Murray running. He's a he's a spectacular passer, uh, and so I'm not taking that away from him. But I'm saying the the secret sauce of why Arizona is good is because Kyler can run. Yeah, and to, if he's to, if he's scared to run, then you got to be hesitant to start him. Yeah, to illustrate that the the previous month before the shoulder uh, injury, he was averaging 77 rushing yards a game, mm -hmm. which is very good. In the last two games. He's been averaging 23 rushing yards, and then you get the Los Angeles Rams. I'll say this. I, I do have Ryan Tannehill ahead of Kyler in my personal rankings right now. Mm. If I had them on my roster, I don't think I could actually start uh, Tannehill. I don't, I, I don't have I think it would gumption. be an overreaction. I really do. I mean, you had one one of the two games you're giving in as an example. He was actively hurt in. He got hurt in that game. Yeah. I'm not going to contribute that to his running prowess. And then last last week, maybe they were trying to protect him. Maybe it just didn't happen. I, I think this team is on the – I mean, they're the last team on the bubble for the playoffs. They're in the wild card right now. They got to get this thing going. And Kyler, this is the only game the entire year that Kyler hasn't been a top option for fantasy. I am uh, – it's not hometown bias. It's – it's you know, when you think of Tannehill, it's what Mike said about – uh, the Yeti, right? Like the, if he doesn't connect on a big play to AJ Brown, Tannehill can have a very okay game. I don't think he's been in the 30 point category for a while. So, you know, it all depends on your options, but I doubt you have somebody better than Kyler and I couldn't live with myself benching. Yeah. Uh, no, I, 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 I get it. I do. I really do. But it's just one of those, you go through the pieces. We're not sure if Larry Fitzgerald will be back. I assume he's not going to be off the COVID IR list. He tested positive. At least that's how it was reported. So if you don't have him and Jalen Ramsey's locked down on Hopkins, then you're hoping for Isabella and Kirk to really get it done. Otherwise, it's all about Kyler's rushing. If he do, he's gonna have to rush enough. That's that's just the the flat out truth. If you want a good game, Hopkins has had kind of a tough run of lockdown corner matchups recently. He went Tre'Davious White, and obviously the the hail mary kind of saved that game. But last week he had Gilmore. This week he gets Ramsey. I assume he gets Bradbury next week. Mm -hmm. Followed by Slay. Possibly. In uh, week 15. Followed by Sherman. That is Followed correct. by Ramsey Followed again. by Ramsey. That's how the season finishes. And yet, I know Make that, that money, I, won't, Hopkins. I won't possibly put Hopkins anywhere near my bench, and yet it doesn't get me enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. Force him the ball. Yeah, yeah, just force it to him. Force it to him, please. So... All right, we've got more mailbag questions later today on the uh, footcast for all the supporters over at jointhefoot.com. And we're going to wrap this show up now. We'll be watching football this afternoon. We'll be getting into the week 13 matchups on Thursday and Friday. Starts of the week tomorrow. Oh, Frank, you could just 
declare Frank Gore right now, Jason. I mean, that's... Tempting. Tempting, yeah. All right, we'll talk to you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.